Hi, welcome back to Intuition Nutrition. I'm Jennifer Hill, and this is my friend, Rebecca Ross, the lovely Rebecca from Earth Spirit Energy. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I invited Rebecca here because she is basically an herbalist goddess. She has so many talents, and we'll talk more about that later, but she is here to talk to us a little bit about the energetics, right? Of plants, yeah. Plants. So why don't you tell everybody what we're going to do today? Ah, well, what we did was um, we're going to taste, we're going to, through the energetic suburbs, we're going to use taste, and we're going to sample the difference between dry ginger and between fresh ginger. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to say, I haven't said anything to Jen because I want to see exactly how she's going to respond. Yes. Well, I was excited because <clears throat> ginger, as you might know, is really good for your digestive system. Mm -hmm. And if you have any stomach issues, as far as like an upset stomach, or if you get car sick, um, have a little ginger around and it really does soothe your tummy. Mm -hmm. um, excellent for nausea. Excellent for nausea, yep. Yeah. And it's spicy and you know I like my spice. Yes. <laughs> and because of that spicy energetic that it has, um, it's exceptional for warming up the body, especially the extremities. So you know people that get lot really cold hands and feet, it's really, really great for that. Mm -hmm. So I love to use ginger for people here in the winter a lot. Oh yeah. It's really mm -hmm. exceptional too for um, post nasal drip Mm -hmm. So it helps to dry that up um, very quickly. So people with even with allergies, it doesn't just have to be cold season. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Well, we made some tea at home um, for my son who was having some stomach issues. And he tried, we made ginger and lemon and honey. And he, since his sister made it for him, he was being really nice and he drank it up. And when she left the room, he says, Mommy, it was too spicy. Because <laughs> <laughs> it does really get, get spicy. But it does. It, it, it can. Around. It can. And that also has to do with, um, are you doing it dry? or fresh, and how long are you steeping it for, and how strong are you making it? Because you can make it pretty weak, if, like for kids. Right. <clears> That'll be a little better, and add a little bit more of that honey and so with, lemon in there. <clears throat> we're going to taste these in a minute, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And see the difference. But while we were preparing this, um, Rebecca put these gi fresh ginger peels in her hands and said, smell this. And I smelled it. And it's just so fresh and wet, and I don't even yes. know how to describe it. And then when you smell the difference to the dry, it was. Mm -hmm. What will explain what you... Yeah, the dry, I said, wow, this smells, it smells like a ginger candy to me, um, like something that's been created from ginger, but it's pure ginger. It's pure ginger, it's organic ginger, yeah. So um, it's amazing just from the smell, which is another energetic taste, smell, mm -hmm. yeah. There's a lot of different ways that you can, you can also do energetics through just where a plant is in the environment, mm -hmm. you know, does it like the sun, does it like the shade, is it cold, is it wet? And you can tell what it will do to you by that? Certainly, like you could look at mm. aloe vera, yeah. and it's something that grows more in desert conditions, but it is filled with moisture. Oh, yeah. And it is good for the skin. It's good for cooling the skin mm -hmm. internally and externally. So it's great for heat, it's great for burns, mm -hmm. but it grows in that hot environment. So that's an energetic for you where you're seeing the environment that it's growing in, and you're seeing how that can help you mm -hmm. um, emotionally and physically. So cool. Yeah. All right. So I would love to um, explain to everybody how we did this. Okay. Okay. So why don't you take it away and tell us how, tell everybody what we did. And you know what, do you want to show your fun trick with I can. Okay. I can. Um, what we did um, just for today, we made a small amount, but like at home, I'll fill these all the way up, which are generally two quarts, about mm -hmm. 64 ounces. And what we did was about 32 ounces of boiled water in either one. And then we took these lovely things that I use. Um, I love these. These are tea sacks and they're unbleached hemp. You can get them in different sizes. This is a large size. Number two is the large size. Number one is like for single cups. Mm -hmm. But they're really a wonderful thing for, for uh, making your own tea bags. So basically, one side will open. And where can you get these? All over. You can get them online, too. Oh, okay. You can get them online. You can get them in different tea shops. Mm -hmm. I used to get them online because I had a tea shop, but, oh. which is I don't have anymore, but yeah. Oh, a woman of many trades. Yes. <laughs> so see how it opens there. And so you're going to take... I don't know, for two, depends on how strong you like it, but generally you use one teaspoon per eight ounces, um, one to two teaspoons per eight ounces, but I just did sort of two heaping teaspoons for the entire quart. So I just, you know, that's just too flat, but you could just do two. And then all you're doing is you're folding it over to close it. You always want to leave enough room, so maybe we'll leave a little bit more for it to expand because the dry material will expand. The wet material is already moist, but the dry material will definitely expand. And then you just use your little handy dandy stapler <laughs> and you have your own tea bag. 
Pretty so, fancy. Yep. It's a great way to bring tea into work too. You just make a bunch of these and, and put them in a baggie and you can use them whenever you want. Cool. So you can have fresh ingredients. You don't have to always mm. just get the bags from the grocery store. And I keep hearing these reports about how tea is made and how they use all kinds of fumes and gaseous um, treatments to make yes. tea that you buy in the store? Sometimes, yes. Sometimes it depends. On it the depends. Tea, on the company, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. And so Mountain Rose Herbs is a herbal company that I get a lot of um, herbs from. Can I? Can I? I mean, yeah. I'm not associated with them. We just can't just say they're really the like best them. in the world. Just say Oh, no, they're them. great. And they have a lot of organic choices, and they have mm -hmm. lots of teas, too. Um, anyway, there's plenty of them out there. But what I mean is when you make it yourself, you know that it's good, right? You know that it's yeah. good, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know that they're not treated. You know that they're very clean mm -hmm. when you get them from this particular company. But there's lots online. Mm -hmm. um, so you take your bag, you put it in your um, hot water. We let them steep for about 10, 15 minutes for a medicinal brew. And so... So that's what we did with the, the dry. We did the same with the fresh, but there was a different way of preparing the fresh. Here, I'll cut a little chunk that you can scoop out the... Okay. So mm -hmm. if you um, have used, try to uh, peel ginger before, you'll know that when you try to peel off the skin with a knife, you actually scrape some of the, the ginger roots. So if you use a spoon, you can also have your kids help you, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't take any of the, the roots. See, it just peels right off. Super easy. I love it. And you only peel the skin and you don't peel the root. So that's what we did. Then we chopped it up mm -hmm. and we made it into small chunks and then we stuck it in a tea sack and put it in the water. Now this is the fresh and you see it actually comes in a different color as well. Right. And then this is the dry. And what, what we're going to be testing is to see uh, the difference in the taste and how that might feel different in your body. Yes. Which would be an energetic. I can't wait to ginger. try it. Ginger, yeah. I also brought honey and lemon because, you know, that goes well together. But we're going to try it, it probably does. without the sweetener just to see. Just to try it in the beginning and then yes. we can sweeten after. Because you really want that natural flavor in the beginning mm -hmm. to see mm -hmm. how that's going to react in your body. Which one do you think we should try first when we do it? Um, let's try the, the fresh first. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll so try we'll, the fresh first. We'll pour a little of each. That's um, right. And I made, this morning I got up and made some scones because I wanted to have something that we could have. Which look very delicious. Thank you. <laughs> um, there's a and recipe. And gluten-free, which is wonderful for yes, me. Yes, they are. Yes. I always make gluten-free and vegan. Um, I call them my accidental scones because I was actually trying to make breakfast cookies for my kids one day and they came out scony. So I said, okay, they're scones. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the recipe is actually on my website if you wanted to go check it out. Um, it's very easy to make. It took me probably 20 minutes this morning to make. Oh, that's quick. Yeah. Um, and there's some um, <clears throat> raspberry jelly right here, organic raspberry jelly mm. that I have on the side because we might want to just put a little bit on there. Yeah. Somewhere. So what do you say? Do you want to pour some tea and go have a little? Yeah, that sounds great. Okay. Here, so we'll start with the fresh. Okay. Would you do the honors, please? So do you want to make, do you want to share the cup and we can just do one cup of each and then we'll kind of, you're not sick, are you? No, I'm not sick. I'm we not could sick. do it either way or we could each have a little bit and then pour the other one in after we finish, whatever you think. Oh, you want to taste here? No, 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 we can bring them. It doesn't matter. We'll share a cup. Let's share a cup and then we don't have We're to We're friends here. <laughs> this is what you do at home, I mean. Right, I know. Right. Here you go. Oh, it's so warm. It feels so good. Yes. Did you know that if you filled up a plastic, I'm just going to give you all a little hint. If you fill up a plastic bottle with warm water in bed and put it on your tummy, it can act like a water, uh, yeah. you know, one of those hot water bottles. Yeah. Hot water compress or whatever you want to call it. Okay. So um, we're going to head over and have a little snack. So join us, would you? See you in a minute. Okay, so it's tea time. Yay. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. All right, so where should we start, Rebecca? Well, let's start with the fresh ginger tea first. Okay. So to get all of the energetics, energetics you want to smell. Mm -hmm. So it's like an art, really. Yeah. yeah. Smell it. Yeah, and then taste it. Mm -hmm. Ooh. And that's about a 10 minute steep. So what's what's the first thing that you notice? So that's really what you want to get is that it was light and fruity. Light and fruity. Okay. I don't know. Now are you noticing any simil um, anything happening on your tongue? It just feels smooth. Okay. Smooth. So like we did a 10 minute steep and you could easily do a half an hour if you want something stronger, which mm -hmm. we do, but we didn't have the, the time this morning to mm -hmm. do a long steep, but you could easily do it 30 minutes. And Jen and I actually leave the herbs in our teas the whole time. We yeah. really enjoy them strong. So now what now go ahead and try the dry ginger root. Okay. Smell that. 
Wow, it smells so much stronger. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's got the spice. See, that one didn't have the spice. Right, and you said smooth. Now, how does that taste on your tongue? Try again. Dry. Dry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely tastes dry on my tongue. And is, what's, what's, the, what's the spiciness compared to this one? It's, it's much more spicy, and it's going right to the back of my mouth. Ah, so mm -hmm. now you're feeling, okay, good. Yeah. So what that tells me, and <laughs> what we know about the energetics of ginger, is that this is pretty much the, mm. the fresh root is pretty much tridoshic. And what that does, an Ayurvedic term, meaning that it's good for all different types of constitutions in general. Now, if you have too much heat in your body, too much pitta, too much heat, then ginger might not be an option for you mm -hmm. because it would just be spicy in general. Right. But for the most part, it is something that's good for all constitutions. Now, the dry ginger root is concentrated, as you know. I mean, it was much stronger. Look at the color differential. Yeah. It's very different. Mm -hmm. So it's a very concentrated ginger. So that would be for people that are more cold. Mm -hmm. um, definitely not for people that have any type of heat in their body. So this would, I would stay away from that for any type of... Um, any type of medicinal use, I would always use the, the fresh, but somebody that's really cold and, can, and needs that spice and needs mm -hmm. that heat and really needs to get things to their fingers at the tips and their toes, you might want to try that. And you this can one. always add honey, you mm -hmm. know, to soften the flavor a little bit. But that's see, great. you just got that idea yeah. of how very different it was. Yeah. I love it. Thank you so mm -hmm. much for sharing that. So, um, should we, you, you want to pick one that you want to drink while we sit oh, here? Oh, well, I like them both. I mean, I know what they're, but they're, I like them both. <laughs> they're both good. We can, I mean, since we're sh friends, we can just share yeah. as we the, go. The fresh is my favorite. Yeah. You really can't go wrong with that. No. And it's interesting because I actually have a colder um, constitution, but I prefer the fresh to the dry. Uh -huh. The dry, even though I can handle spicy foods and all that type of thing, I don't have any type of acid reflux or anything like that. Mm -hmm. The dry is just, the concentration doesn't settle as well in my tummy as oh. where I just feel amazing and wonderful drinking See. the dry, drinking the fresh root. So, so do you recommend that people try different um, kinds and feel what feels and better? And feel what goes on, mm -hmm. yeah. And always know that the fresh is great for everyone in general. Right. Um, but the dry definitely comes into play. Now I use ger dry ginger root in my chais. Oh. Mm. You make your own chai? Yeah, of course. Oh. So when are we going to have Another time. <laughs> tea again? <laughs> we'll talk about because it's so many digestive herbs. Yes. We could talk about digestion and nutrition sure. and, and chai. Well, speaking of, yes. would you like to have a scone, an I accidental would. scone? <laughs> I would. Um, and there's, like I said, there's some jelly if you want to put it on. Or you can have it plain, whatever you like. I think I'll just grab one too. Sure. So these have chia seeds in them and um, ground flax. And both of those mm. will give oh, you some cinnamon. Some cinnamon. Yeah. Nutmeg? Or no, just no, not Meg, just cinnamon. Oh, they smell wonderful. Oh, thank you. Um, both the the flax and the chia seeds will give you some omegas, the fatty acids that you need. Um, oh, they're good. You like them? Mm-hmm. Thank you. She's a good cook. <laughs> Are there raisins or some kind of? Oh yeah, there's raisins in them mm. and a little bit of honey. Um, Yummy. Is there carrots? See something orange. No carrots. Um, what could be the orange? See the orange. The here cinnamon. Too? It's cinnamon. Orange. Or, oh, there's a little chunks of cinnamon in there. Just sprinkle the cinnamon in, but yeah, oh, you can yummy. probably see it. So I'm just gonna leave mine here. So while we're just munching and sipping, <laughs> um, why don't you share a little bit about oh. how you got into this? Oh. Um, you know the herbals. The I know you told me that you do shamanic healing and Reiki, and a Reiki master teacher. Reiki master teacher. Mm -hmm. And um, herbs, of course, as you've mm -hmm. demonstrated. What else? And, and body work. I do lots of body work. I've been a body worker for um, over 18 years. What does that mean? Massage? Massage. I do a lot of chronic pain management. I mm -hmm. do a lot of um, pre post surgery. Mm -hmm. I help people, opt, um, athletes get you know, optimal performance. Mm -hmm. You know, you mm -hmm. want strong, flexible muscles. You don't just want strong and you don't just want flexible. You right. want a wonderful a combination of both. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what's your favorite, I mean, you're, you're a multi-passionate businesswoman <laughs> Yes. from the heart. What is your favorite kind of avenue that you have? Well, being in the garden. Mm. I mean, I, I love taking people out on plant walks, um, and I do a lot of energetic tasting, and so we taste things. Do they make you salivate? Well, guess what? That's creating enzymes, and that's great for digestion. Mm -hmm. um, does it clear your sinuses? 
Um, does it smell, when you smell the lavender, when you rub the lavender, you know, something that's great with lavender is it's uh, a natural nervine, so it's great for the nervous system. Mm -hmm. Well, what happens when you rub it and you smell it? It smells really good, mm -hmm. right? And it relaxes you. It just lets that pressure come off your shoulders. Sounds like you're really a teacher. Oh, yeah, I love teaching. You're educating people. I you? love teaching. I mean, even just this experience with me, I feel like I've gotten an education from you. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what it's all about. We need to share the medicine. It's, it's mm -hmm. our medicine. Right. And how did you do that? How did you get started? What did you used to do before you found? Oh, <laughs> well, I, I've, been, I've been talking with the plant since I was small, so a lot of the shamanic work comes in, into play there, but I communicate. Um, but I'm also, I'm also school-learned, you know. I did right. an apprenticeship in advanced um, studies actually out here in New England when my husband and I came here. Mm -hmm. But um, back From in Cali California, okay. Yeah, back in California, I had my own landscaping gardening company out there. Mm -hmm. um, I've worked with the plants in many different ways and I feel like I've come full circle now learning their medicine. Oh. And um, so just being out in the garden, I just work in harmony with the energies that are out there in the garden as well as everything that I just know to be about taking care of soil and watering and plants and That's different so things. Cool. Yeah, so, when so you I kind of combine it all. When you say you've spoken to plants since you were a kid, what does that mean? Um, Tell me a story about that. Oh, well, um, plants love to tell me, you know, what they like. So, and they also love to tell me about their, their medicine. So when I used to take care of plants interior, I used to be an interior design person. <laughs> so I used to go in and, you know, all those um, office buildings and stuff where you see the plants. I was the person that would go around and water them and take care of them. Mm -hmm. People love to dump their coffee Aww. in plants. They like to throw food in there, all these different mm -hmm. things. You see these plants just like wilt, just hurting. Yeah. And you would go there and you wouldn't really see anything in the signs, but the plants would tell me, you need to go down, you need to check my drain pan, you need to figure things out. And, I would, and it would just be filled with coffee. I mean, it was just... All this acid was going through this plant, and that's why it had all these spots all over it. It was dried or whatever condition it was yeah. in. So I would learn those types of things um, and how through do working they, with the plants. How do they tell you? I just hear them. You, like I, I like just, words, I voices, have, or messages? or. I just, I, they're definite voices, and they're not wow. mine, and I'm not schizophrenic, and I went, you know, you have to sort of go through all those stages with yourself if you become any kind of an intuitive. Yes. Um, so they definitely communicate with me, and that helps me a lot um, with the medicine, working mm -hmm. with the body, the body speaks to me. That is so, so cool. People come in with different conditions, and I'm just guided to go places. And I get confirmation mm -hmm. from my clients, knowing that I just went straight to their finger, or right. I went straight to their, they don't say anything, and I'm going straight to know. the spot. Mm -hmm. Well, their body's talking. That is so cool. So I just have to listen. So I, through the years, regardless of what I'm, I'm doing, it's all around helping people. Mm -hmm. It's all about staying in balance, right, with the earth and myself. Um, but really, it's about listening. Yeah. And the quieter I get, the, the better I hear and the better I'm able to help people. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I feel very blessed that the, the herbs share that type of medicine with me. And, and when you think about it, before there were all these books and there were all these scholars, how do you think the original people learned the medicine? They That's watched in nature and they also had a much stronger communication mm -hmm. with the plants at that time. We, mm -hmm. were, we were much more connected before we got all these distractions. That is a really good point. I yeah. mean, nowadays people are so busy on their phones and their sure. devices. They're Driving probably... in the car. We yeah. used to walk to mm -hmm. get places, drive on horses. We camped out right. under the stars. That was just a way of life for mm -hmm. thousands of years. So so you're, so you're connected, yeah, old I'd love world to be style. <laughs> well, yeah, and I'm also connected in the new world, too. Of course, but yes. my favorite place, you asked, yeah, is definitely out in the garden and with, garden. with mm -hmm. everything, yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, I love hearing about that. Do you think anybody could develop these skills to hear plants? Absolutely. I teach classes to help people mm -hmm. get in tune and, you know, different techniques and, and different things that you can do to um, inspire that in yourself or to grow that in mm -hmm. yourself. Because we oh, get cool. different different messages. Anybody right. that, that works with things um, in that way, in that sort of unseen world, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. um, have different talents. So some people hear, some people see, some people feel. Yeah. Some that people experience cool. through taste. Mm -hmm. So another reason why I like using energetics, it's a great avenue right. for opening up the senses. Right. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing your talents you. with us. Thank um, you. Rebecca, are you into yoga at all? Do you enjoy yeah, yoga? Yeah, I love yeah. yoga. Oh, good. I love yoga. Oh, good. And meditation. So. Because I was thinking today, in honor of you and your um, passions, we would do tree. 
Oh, wonderful. Does that sound good? That one's hard for me because I, I don't know why it, I can't. Oh. Yep, I'll, I'll do it my best okay. shot. Okay. Sticking my leg in there. Maybe you can give me a tip above my knee. Okay, sure. I can try to help. There's I, a couple I ways you can balance, do it. But for some reason, <laughs> it always slides. Well, then it's perfect. We'll I'm, do that. I'm going right. to learn from you, too. Oh, good. Excellent. <laughs> well, you know, my magic wand is MIA. Yeah. Well, let's use the spirit, the the plant diva spirit oh, uh, okay. of the ginger. All right. Right? Because every plant has um, a spirit. A spirit? Yeah. And spirits are magical. And spirits are magical. And so, that's what we need, right? Right. So. That's all we need, a little magic. <laughs> okay, ginger spirit, can you sh change us into our yoga clothes? Ready? Do we say anything like abracadabra? You just say whatever you want. Okay. We'll just say, how about ginger in Spanish? It's a really fun word. Oh, wonderful. Jengibre. You ready? Like that. Stay with me. <laughs> Jengibre. Okay, on the count of three. One, okay. two, three. Jengibre. <laughs> wow. Right? Isn't that cool? Look at the shirt. I know. The Hello, ginger sunshine. The ginger fairy is powerful. I know. Isn't I she? I know. She's very powerful. Um, so today we're going to do a little tree. Okay. Okay. So for people at home, the tree pose is really a good way to do some balancing. And I've mentioned before that balancing postures are really good for your micro muscles, like in your ankles, they can strengthen your ankles. And they can also help you just find that balance both literally and metaphorically in your life. So we'll start by putting your left foot really nice and strong on the, on the floor. And we're going to shift our weight onto our left side. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are having a hard time balancing, you can start with your right foot, put it right up to your calf. See, that's a good way to you start. You could even just do it. You could even, yeah, sure. Put it right just on the floor. Just for balance, if yeah. you're trying to. Good point. I've done it that way. And a good place to watch is something that's not moving. So look at a, a, a spot on the wall or a piece of furniture. <laughs> and if that feels comfortable, then you can go ahead and raise your foot up to your calf. The only place you don't want to put it is right next to your knee, because that may push the knee. And your knee is not meant to move sideways that way. It's really meant to move forward and backwards. So if that feels comfortable and you want to pull, you can, might have to use your hand to help, but you can really tighten up your left thigh muscle inside and out and push your right foot against. It'll slide on these You feet. can let go. If you're sliding, bit. if you're sliding, you might just need to push really harder, you know, make that muscle even t harder, like a rock. <laughs> if that feels good, <laughs> you can try putting your hands together in the middle of your chest. Okay, let me try. And another, I'm going to show you another way you can do it, and you're sort of doing it, is you can hold your foot with your opposite hand. Of course, I'm going to wobble. <laughs> That's to show you how to wobble. The goat roots um, come from the hook right there above my knee. You can hold your foot with your opposite hand. Oh, yeah. And then just gently make sure your knee is going down, and that will help open up your hip. If that feels good, you can put one hand up in the middle of your chest. It's okay. You know what? You just, <laughs> this is a really good example of going where you're most comfortable. That's right. Right? So I'm good there. All right. Okay. So let's go on the other side. So now we're going to shift our weight all onto our right foot. Okay. And start, try to do identical what you did on one side to the other side. So okay. if you started with your foot down on the floor, you start there or up on your calf. Shimmy your way up. Remember, skip the knee and you can go up to your inner thigh. Remember, make your right Thigh I'll muscle, see for some reason solid. It's better on that side. I think we all have a stronger side. Is that it? Yeah. Don't forget to stare at a spot that's not moving. Try putting your hands up. There you go. And if you tried with your hand, let's do the same thing I on that I side, just be to be to this side. equal. <laughs> Stand straight. Remember, be very gentle with your knee here. You're you're just trying to open up your hip. You're not trying to like twist your knee. So stand up straight. And if you can, you put one hand up in the middle of your chest. <laughs> for five seconds. And if your foot doesn't slip, you can actually put both hands up, but I am not there yet. See, oh, there it goes, bye-bye. <laughs> so I, I have the alternate position. I'll just show everybody else like that's, that needs a chair. Yes. You can also use a chair. Oh, absolutely. I do that with people in my, my, um, my clients, that if yeah. they need chairs to balance, then they can just have one there, and then they can mm -hmm. work at. I don't usually need a chair to balance, but for some reason, you know, some days you balance better and it other It could days be you all don't. the bright lights. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, anyway, that's Tree, and that was really an honor of you because you are, I feel like you're this garden goddess who helps things Aww. grow and listens to the plants. Oh, so. that's lovely. <laughs> so I hope that you all get a little something from that at home. Rebecca, can you tell everyone where they can find you? Um, I'm, you can find me on the web at earthspiritenergy.com, and I also am on Earth Spirit Energy on Facebook. 
Nice. Okay. And all my information's on there. So On both of those places. Yes. Yay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And tune in next time for some food for your mind, body, and spirit. And check out Rebecca's website because oh, she's truly amazing. You. Okay. Thank you.